Hi, I'm John, the MedPot Combat Engineer, and I'm going to tell you about how 15,000 ACMPR MedPot patients look like they're going to be getting a royal screwing. Here's why it's going to be a royal screwing for 15,000 MedPot patients under the Canadian ACMPR. Now, how it worked is the doctor signs a medical document. Now, if you fax it to a licensed producer, they deliver it the next day. Priority post. But if you want to self-grow, you got to send in the application to Health Canada and get their authorization, registration of your permit. And that takes six months, eight months, 11 months. Do you understand? They're trying to deter people from self-grows by making it prohibitively expensive, if they can, and a long, long time. So, I heard about complaints, people who were complaining about being delayed for five months. Our lead guy, Jeff uh, Harris, five months. And he got seven months out of his permit to use. His wife delayed seven months. Igor Majaiko delayed 11 months. Imagine how long and making people wait for their meds. So, now how can they do that? Well, this here is the market data from the Government of Canada, and it explains that in the last six months of 2017, they had 18,000 applications, and they authorized 7,000. The other 11,000 improperly submitted their name, their address, or their date of birth. Imagine, 11,000 out of 18,000 got the name, address, date of birth, something wrong, something incomplete. That's what you'd think, but that's too stupid to be real. Here's what we found out. We found out that Health Canada reject applications and say signatures aren't original. And what can you do? but just go back and try and sign again another set of doctor's signatures and try again. He, Donald Cote, imagine this, he was rejected for non-original signatures four times. Four times. Now that would probably explain how in the month of November, they only authorized 270 people out of over 3,000, 8%. The other 92 person got their name, address, and birth date wrong. So, or didn't submit originals. Now, it's stated clearly that you have to submit originals. So that is one phony excuse, but that's the one we've caught them using. Okay? So what do you, how do you argue against it? We want to find out how they determined these things weren't original. One of our plaintiffs... Art Jakes, he's got his application back and he can show, just scratch the back with a pencil, you can show this was an original. And that's how they should have done it in Health Canada. So that is how they've managed to stall self-growers while promoting licensed producers. Now, also, doctors now are signing for prescriptions to grow at $50 a gram, okay? Well, you can go in and get a free prescription if you're going to an LP, but that's always being under five grams at high prices versus, you know, uh, 20 grams at low prices. So anyway, and so that's basically what they did to stall the permits. And therefore I decided, you know, that's a cause of action if you want to go to court and ask to have, you know, something for the value of the pot you didn't grow or the value of their site expenses, the rent and all the stuff that you had to pay while you waited. And also, we found out that they subtract the time they took to process it. So that Jeff Harris, when he submitted his thing, it took five months to process and he only got seven months left. His wife, it took seven months to process. She only got five months left. And of course, Igor Majaiko, he submitted a six-month permit and expired before it got processed. How can that happen, you say? Doesn't it start when the period of use begins? No, it used to. Under the MMAR, Section 33, said that the permit, the prescription period of use, starts on the day it's issued. But someone changed it to screw the self-growers again. 
someone changed it from Section 33, date of issuance, to Section 8 2B in the ACMPR when the doctor signed. So they subtract all the time from when the doctor signed till the day they process it, and then you only get the remainder, <clears throat> and you got to go back to the doctor sooner. So that is how they manage to, <laughs> to really sleaze and rip off the people for their time because under the old regime they got the full year all the time renewal date same date all the time under the new regime it's always back to the doctor's signing date so if you're renewing three months early you're going to lose three months again wow what a bunch of sleaze so i'm a well-known uh, court advocate uh, back in the 1980s and 90s, I helped poor people stall their foreclosures in the day of Pierre Trudeau's 22% interest rates. Okay? If a criminal could stall, 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 going to jail by appealing, 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 why couldn't an evictee stall, stall, stall eviction by appealing, appealing, appealing? And I showed him how to reach the Supreme Court of Canada before being evicted. My longest stall, 33 months. So, I drew up some forms some kits, I call them. <clears throat> the court calls these plaintiffs termel kits, which say, hey, six months, it used to take one month under the MMAR. We have evidence of Mr. Lassard, the director, telling federal court that back in 2013 that we process applications in four weeks under and renewals far, far less. And we've heard about two weeks. So that's the standard. Why should Justin be allowed to get away with exceeding the standards that even Harper could deliver. So, four weeks for an application, two weeks, those were the standard that we applied in all of our statements of claim. If this is over a month for an application, I want the value of the pot I could have grown and whatever rent I wasted. So we'll give you the month, like the old days. Now, for someone who's been stalled six months, that gives them a five-month claim for the damages. But they also got ripped off for five, six months. So they want to have their time back. So cause of action A, damages from the delay. And cause of action B, restitution of the ripped off time. Now, so a lead plaintiff. Now, as people started to sign up and we found out, oh, you've been ripped off or you don't have a permit. You want it. You want to, you've been waiting eight months. File this most statement of claim demanding the value of the time, and I had motions. Once you file a statement of claim, you can now make a motion for an interim remedy. And so at least two dozen people filed motions to see Judge Brown, who's our case management judge, and say, <clears throat> we want to have a constitutional exemption until our permit arrives, six months is too long, or our renewal arrives, four months is too long. <clears throat> Or, if it's a renewal, I want my darn application extended. Or, I want an order mandamus ordering them to process it as fast as they can. Get their asses moving. So, <clears throat> those are what the motion asked for. And 25 more times when people had hearings to get in front of the judge, <clears throat> Health Canada came up with the exemption in the nick of time to moot the hearing. Oh, they got their remedy now. No need to go see the judge. <clears throat> and explain to them why the delays. And why, you know, uh, <laughs> why 92% of the time people are rejected. And why the backlog. So we'd like to know that information. But anyway, we have now over 200 plaintiffs who have filed applications because they've been delayed too long and they got ripped off for their time. So, that's the statements of claim. Now, back in January, uh, John's guard case, um, he was a guy who expired, okay? And they got him his exemption three days after he expired. But he got to talk to the judge, Judge Brown, and say, you know, this is terrible. Look how long it took. And that's the same. Now, that was mooted, of course, because he got his permit. But the judge said, hey, I want to have an explanation for this backdating of the permits so they lose time. Okay, wow, so <clears throat> now Health Canada are in a bind because they used to give people their full terms and someone decided to change it in order to rip them off. And there had been, by the end of December, 14,000 grow permits issued and January, February, throw in another one, 15,000. So what they did was, on March the 2nd, 
they issued a, a release and a public notice that they've issued some Section 56 orders, which a class exemption to mooten the statements of claims of the people who are suing to have their time back. Wow. So, now, you know about the causes of action. Now, the Crown have defended. And they said, oh, as for taking too long, six months, 11 months, instead of four weeks, that's frivolous. That's laughable because you haven't given us enough facts. All I gave them was the date of issuance and the date of expiry right off the permits so that you can figure out the date the doctor signed one year earlier. And you can figure out how much permit they got out of the doctor's prescription. You can figure out how long the processing took, how much time they wasted in the mail room, because these things don't take long once they hit somebody's desk. And it tells you how much time you were ripped off for. With just two dates, you can define the period of processing, the period of period of use, and therefore the period that was ripped off. And they're saying that's not enough facts, insufficient facts. Now, the last time we did one of these in 2014, they'd cut off 18,000 people. They just killed their grow permits. You know, they said, you, your grow permit is alive, but your possessed permit, only half the people get to keep it, the other half dead. And so I had over 300 people in federal court asking to have their permits back. And the judge ruled that I just said, put down your MMPR number, proving you were an exemptee, you had qualified medically. And the judge said that wasn't sufficient medical evidence for him to be convinced. And he dismissed their cases. So yeah, judges, who knows? They, they don't understand the difference between sufficient and too much. So we only have the dates here and the fact these people are qualified patients. There, that's it. Now, the Crown makes the argument that, whoa, dates aren't enough and that they need to know what sickness the people have. They should put that. And they should also put down why they didn't try more chems. And they should also put down why they didn't go to an LP. Why do they have to self-grow? These are things the Crown thinks are needed before they can answer the case. And we're saying you just need the dates to be able to say if the period of permit ain't enough and if the period of ripoff is too much. So, since we're talking periods, the only relevant factual data are the start and the end dates, and the guy's sickness has got nothing to do with it, and that they should ask to have it thrown out as frivolous because we haven't put down what sicknesses they got, is their whole case. Got it? Now, B. Now, we're saying that, hey, this ripoff, somebody changed it from Section 33 MMAR issuance date to Section 8. 2B or B2, I'm going to just call it 8 in the ACMPR, which says when the doctor signed. So now we have this wonderful case where the judge says, I want an explanation for the backdating. Well, before they could come in, now we suddenly hear from the Crown Attorney in their response. Now, these are the statements of claim you get when you take out a statement of claim. 200 people have one of these ready for their trophy wall. So anyway, the Crown now made a defense. They put in their arguments. And they said, oh, look, Section 178.2H of the ACMPR requires that the period of use expire at the conclusion of the period indicated by the health care practitioner. 178.2H. Really? Well, let's go look at 178.2H. What does it say? The registration must include the expiry date of the registration, which must correspond to the end of the period of validity of the medical documents supporting the registration, as determined in accordance with Section 8.3. Didn't say doctor, did it? Oh, let's go look at Section 8.3. Section 8.3, okay, a medical document is valid for the period of use specified in it. Whoa, does that say anything about a doctor signing? So, the Crown sent the court on a wild goose chase, okay, up a blind alley, goes nowhere. Section 178 leads to Section 83 that doesn't say anything at all about the doctor. So, where is the doctor's? Well, I went searching for it, and I found it under Section 82B, which says, the period of use uh, must not exceed one year, and begins on the day on which the medical document is signed by the protectioner. 
So, section 8, 2B, says that the doctor signs is when it starts. Okay? Not section 178 that says you got to be according to section 83, which says you got to be in according, it doesn't say anything actually, but section 82 says it starts when the doctor signs. So, why would the Crown send the court up a blind alley? The section 178 to section 3 with no, no, no doctor signing when it's really section 8 to B. Why? Because they don't want to have that section brought to anyone's attention. So, this is what they said. Now, they said that 178 is the, pro the solution. So, anyway, in, in their motion, the Crown says, and I'm going to read it to you in verbatim, paragraph 53, on March the 2nd, 2018, the minister issued several class exemptions pursuant to Section 56 of the CDSA. Okay, one to the registra registered person, one to the designated person's grower, and one to the responsible person. Okay, so that's it. Three different class exemptions. These exemptions apply to anyone with a res registration certificate issued on or after March 2nd, 2018. Whoa, all our people got ripped off before March 2nd. What do we care if they're not going to rip off people anymore after March the 2nd? Pursuant to these exemptions, Health Canada now issues registration certificates with a period of use that begins on a date the registration certificate is issued. Instead of on the date that the medical document was signed by the health care practitioner. So, these Section 56 orders have changed it. This is the very relief sought by the plaintiffs. Yes, they wanted to have their time back. And it sounds like they're going to get it, right? Relief having been granted by the minister, the requested declarations are now moot. So, I sat there figuring, okay, when we see these orders, she's going to come in and argue, what about it? And she's going to give up on cause B. She's going to say, okay, we've now given people their time and we've now stopped ripping them off. And that was fine by me. So now that was their, <laughs> that was their answer. But if you go to their exhibits now, you have Exhibit D, which is issued on March the 2nd by Health Canada. Okay. And this was in the affidavit of Mr. McGuire, their head guy. And it says, Health Canada's heard from patients, therefore... Canada has issued a class exemption under Section 56 that allows for the period of use of your, your registration to begin on the date it was issued. And this means your registration is valid for the length of the time that your health care practitioner originally authorized. You get your full term. Yay! Now, the Cannabis Act also contemplates um, the period of use would begin on the date of initial registration and not on the date the medical document was signed by the health care practitioner. So, they've admitted that this, doing it for the health care practitioner costs people time and they're going to stop doing it. Now, I'm hoping that they're going to give the people their time back because, God, that's easy. I mean, all they have to do is simply print out a new, a, a new certificate with a different expiry date and then mail out 16,000 stamps and it's fixed and I thought it was fixed until we get the crowns thing because I'd heard about this on around March the 2nd okay about this notice going out to the people and I thought to myself why would they be telling all the newbies who don't need to know they should be telling the oldies who got ripped off right why are they telling the newbies who aren't getting ripped off? No one's getting ripped off anymore. You know, why weren't they telling the oldies? So, that is... <clears throat> now, I went and I checked. And I had originally announced, looks like all these claims for the restitution of your permits are going to be extended because they say they've mooted your demand to have your permit extended to the full term. Yay! Then I go look at the Section 56 order, okay? And now here's how they work. These are fifth, Section 56 class exemptions. And uh, usually the scope explains it. Pursuant to Section 56, here's another one. Pursuant to Section 56, licensed producers are exempted from the application of subsection 25.2 of the ACMPR. Well, that's what a class exemption works like. Licensed producers are exempted from this section. 
Here's another one. Pursuant to Section 56, applicants for a producer's license are exempted from the requirement in paragraph 33.1H. And it had nothing to do with the doctor. Okay. Now, the one for cannabis, for registered persons. It starts with a registration certificate means any registration certificate issued on or after March the 2nd, 2018. What happens to the ones before? And the scope of the exemption. Pursuant to Section 56, registered persons are exempted from Section 4.1 of the CDSA, possession. Well, we know that. Section 5, trafficking. We know that. Section 7, production. We know that. But no Section 8B. 8B, 2B. Right? The other ones all said pursuant to this section. Well, this is supposed to be changing it from when the doctor signed to date of issuance. Do you see anything on this Section 56 order talking about Section 8 to be? Nothing. Now, here's a scam. They said that because we've said March the 2nd makes a difference from before and after, the point is everybody before was exempted from Section 4, 5, and 7 anyway. So they're saying that, geez, People after March the 2nd are now going to have no change. Wow, what an announcement. No changes in the rules for people after March the 2nd, as if there were before. So, a complete scam to lie to the court that this order, Section 56, somehow took out the requirement under Section 8 for the doctor and put in requirement date of issuance. Now, I'm an electrical engineer, so and I've studied computers and I and software, and I understand how it's a software coder who had to take out date of issuance when printing the licenses and stick in date the doctor signed off the database. So you're gonna take the date out of this column from when doctor signed and put it in instead of the date like it used to be when date of issued. So the software programmer was told, was given legislation to change it from Section 33 issuance to Section 8 uh, doctor signed. But there is no legislation and no class exemption to stop the requirement the doctor signed. They lied about what it does when all they had to do was print up 16,000 permits with the right expiry dates and their problem would have been over. Are they crazy? So anyway, now we found out that, whoa, and plus, and it says March the 2nd, whatever this is supposed to do, moot their cases, it's not for these people who are complaining about being ripped off anyway. It's for people after March the 2nd. Wow. So I published an article and I said, uh-oh, bad news. They're not, they're only people who they didn't rip off are being told that it's you know not going to be a rip off anymore people who were ripped off you're staying ripped off you're not getting your extensions then i hear from kent truman and he says whoa whoa you know when i heard that i thought that it applied to you know us you know we're going to get our time back you know it's mooted our demand for restitution which means i shouldn't need my restitution i should be getting it right i said well they lied okay and you're not going to get it so he said, wow, my permit expires in three days. So I said, okay, file a motion on short notice, get it on the judge's desk. He says, but I did one thing smart. I sent it in a month earlier. So I knew, you know, my permit should go until September, five months later. But I sent it in five months earlier, so I'd be one month before my May expiry. So they got four weeks to deal with my renewal. Now, if you look at my posts and googlegroups.com under alt.fan.john hyphen termel yeah yeah usenet that was big in the old days you will be able to find all the stories and the reports on all these people i'm talking about and what happened to them so he finds out he files his motion and the judge says up oh, not enough time four weeks when it used to take two and let it expire now, don't forget, it was Judge uh, Brown who originally worried about people who had permits, had proven medical need, and then their permits expired, like, um, like Heidi Chartrand. 
She sent it in for two weeks, said, I had scope with the doctor. Can we get it done fast? No, they let it expire. So she went back two weeks later, now they got it done. So other people got it done in under three weeks. So they can do renewals in three weeks if they can find him in the mail in the mail room backlog. So anyway, he's begging the judge, hey, please, you know, I mean, I sent it in a month in advance for a renewal that under the MMAR took two weeks. Can you, will you extend it until they send it to me? So that's Kent Truman's case. Will you, ex they didn't fix it. I don't see anywhere in the Section 56 article where this helps me. Okay, I think I can be busted on in three days when my permit expires. And therefore, I want to have an extension. Now, the judge doesn't give him his quick hearing, lets it expire. He should have given the quick hearing because Health Canada in the past, to get out from under a hearing, they even gave people permits after they'd returned their applications. Nicole Van Edig and Donald Cote, both of them had been applications rejected. And to beat the, going into court, they issued their permits without even having the applications in their possession. Why couldn't they do that for him? So it expired. He's now in jeopardy. And now he's asking the judge, I want you to extend my damn permit until these clowns get my renewal done. So now all he asked for is looking. She's telling the court, like she said, that these Section 56 applications have mooted my cause of action B, which is them short dating by back dating my permit to when the doctor signed, and I want the damn restitution. Show me the documentation that says I'm safe. She can't provide any documentation. All she can do is say, oh, he didn't ask for this right. He has no right to do that. He shouldn't be able to do this. Judge shouldn't do that. But nowhere does she ever provide any documentation to show that he doesn't need an extension of his permit until his renewal arrives. Doesn't show it. But she says, oh, but look at these Section 56 applications only apply to people after March the 2nd, not him. Well, if these things don't apply to him, how can she say it applies to him to knock his B, cause of action? Oh, but she says, because we've stopped ripping you off, you don't need to get it back. You got that? Because we've stopped, you don't need restitution, is the Crown's case. Because we stopped ripping you off, you don't need it back. So, and that's what the fight that's still going on. Now, as for now, Justice Brown now, that's his decision coming up, and here's his decision. Now, don't forget now, he's got a motion to extend his permit until these clowns come up with the renewal. Got it? The judge says, and noting that an exception has been created pursuant to Section 56 of the CDSA, which became effective March 2nd, which doesn't apply to him, remember, he's before that, which allows Health Canada to issue registration certificates that expire such that processing times do not shorten the length of the time a registration certificate is valid for all new people. And noting that the applicant agrees that this aspect of his request is now moot. Oh, he doesn't need an extension of his expired permit no more because it's still expired. Wow. So, that's a tell. The judge has said that he sees the same phantom change in that Section 56 order I read to you, which doesn't say a word about Section 8 and the requirement that the doctor sign. But, what happened? Mr. McGuire, in charge of Health Canada, went back and told the programmer, hey, as of March the 2nd, change it. A date of issuance from that column, take the data from this other column. Now, there's no legislation exempting Health Canada from putting the medical document when the doctor signed. They don't have that. They just did it. He just told the programmer, do it. And it'll cover, people will stop complaining, they'll think it's fixed, and we know that even though we stopped doing it, nobody ordered us to. The minister certainly didn't. He signed that thing authorizing people to be exempt from everything they were already authorized over. How not bright do you have to be? Now, the judge has said here again, 
But he finds that this exemption now allows them to do this. Well, they are doing it, but it's not because of those Section 56 orders. It's because McGuire just told the programmer to change it. And he did. Against the law. Because the law says you still got to require when the doctor signed. So, that is the dirtiest, most crooked piece of bureaucracy you will ever see. But we got a problem. We got a judge who's seeing the same delusion that the Crown and that Mr. McGuire is seeing that somehow the requirement in Section 8 is gone and it's been replaced by the date of issuance. You saw it. It's not there. So that means that the, doc, the court's probably going to do the dirty deed. While there are only 200 people who are aware that they've been ripped off and are suing for their time back by saying... Ah, you don't need it. They're not ripping you off no more. That only pisses off 200 people. The other 14, 15,000 aren't going to be aware they got ripped off and someone asked to fix it for them and the court said no. So you know, they only have to basically screw the 200 who asked for their time back by saying, hey, since we stopped ripping you off, since the government stopped ripping you off, you can't have what they stole. They're keeping it. All right, so what can we do about it? Well, right now there are only 200 people who filed this $2 statement of claim. How it works, you go fill out the form, the statement of claim, you insert your name, address, phone number, and your two dates, right? That's all. That's all you got to put in there, the dates to establish the periods, and then everything else is your claim. I want this much time back. I want this much value back. It's all from those two dates. So you go put in the two dates, your name, address, phone number, insert your signature, save it as a PDF, and then go to the court e-filing system and upload it following their instructions or following my steps that I've written down in my instructions page. D-E-L-S-C-I-N-S, -S PDF. Delay, statement of claim, instructions, PDF. D-E-L-S-C-I-N-S, -S PDF, at johnturnell.com. Fill it in. And then file it, you'll get your number, your confirmation number. And the next day, they're going to call you up and say, hey, we want a credit card for the two bucks for the filing fee. Okay, if you give them the credit card, then they give you a number, your T number. And we've got 200 of those. You can shell, check at my list, johntermell.com slash D-E-L list dot text, which has our 200 people and more who are signing up every week. What that tells us is that there are still people who are being stalled and backlogged and they're not going to, they haven't yet explained how many people are in the backlog, we want to know, and how long it's going to take. We've had people ask, but they muted their motions before they could be answered. And you'll notice she did not answer none of the questions the judge had posed. Didn't explain why the backdating, why did you switch from the issuance to the doctor? Tell us, please, we want to know. Someone had the good of the patients in their minds? So, but the judge sounds like he's going to be coming down with the, gee, they changed it and fixed it for you, so you don't need any remedy. Especially when the guy's remedy he's asking for is, I want my permit renewed or extended, and it's dead. And the judge says, gee, it's solved. And his permit's still dead. <laughs> so, what can we do about it? Well, I'm asking everybody to pass along the site and asking everybody who knows anybody with an ACMPR issued last year, they all got ripped off. And they all got a right to their time back. Now, the Crown has made a recent argument in their last statements that, oh, by the 2nd of March 2019, with nobody more than a year, nobody will have any grounds to complain anymore at all. Yeah, but we got grounds right now. And we got victims right now. And... Why would it be so hard to add the months owed at the end of the contract anyway? So, that's what we're looking for. We've had 15,000, 16,000 people ripped off by Health Canada. They've tried to cover it up with out and out lies to the court. And here's the treat. Everybody who files their $2 statement of claim and gets their nice gold star here is then going to get a gold star with the order of Judge Brown saying, this one here says, hey, I got ripped off for six months, okay, and I want it back. And this one's going to say, well, they the judge is going to say, they stopped ripping you off so you don't get it back. 
And because the Section 56 order fixed it, changed things, and then you can go and grab the Section 56 order online and show every your friends, gee, notice nothing about Section 8 at all. So, if you want to have a nice double gold star souvenir of one of the worst, you know, royal screwings in Canadian judicial history, this is the one. For two bucks, you get your statement of claim laying out how much they ripped you off, the government. And then the other one, you got the judge saying, fine, I'm not going to do anything about it. The greatest royal screwing imaginable for a lousy two bucks. And you can prove your points just by showing everybody the Section 56 order that said nothing about changing anything that the judge said solved your problem so he could dismiss your cases. So that's what I think is going to happen. The judge, would the judge dare dismiss 16,000 people who got shortchanged? Well, back in 2014, they, a judge extended everybody's grow ops back to the date when they were scared into shutting down. But then he only extended the possessed permits from the date on. So half the year got shut down. So if a judge could kill the grow ops and cut the meds clean off 18,000 people, do you think a federal court judge is going to wince at cutting the restitution to 16,000 rip-offies who do have their permits now? So if they could actually condemn some people to death, they can condemn these people to a few more doctor fees. That's really what it boils down to. So, in order to stop that, we need a lot of people to surge and start spreading the word. Now, just spread the word to the grow ops in your area, the garden supply shops. Say, you know, anybody with an ACMPR got ripped off. Tell them to join the scream for their time back. And if ever two, three, four thousand people ever joined the demand for their ripped off time back, it would flood the court and the crown and they would have to give it to them. I hope, I think. So, because too many people are making noise. Remember, back in 2014, half the people were out celebrating. They survived. And all the grow permits were extended. You know, the news that only half the possessed permits were extended to use those grow permits didn't make the news. All that made the news was the dancing in the streets. Well, here, there is no dancing in the streets. Everybody with an old ACMPR permit up to March of this year got ripped off and has the right to file a $2 statement of claim demanding the ripped off time back to get the other gold star from the judge saying, hey, they stopped ripping you off. That's all you get. So... JohnTurmel.com, if you want to find out more, I gave you the site. It's D-E-L-S-C-I-N-S dot P-D-F at JohnTurmel.com. Spread the word. Get your friends to claim their time back. The faster we get a lot of them to do it, well, the more likely the judge may actually order them to send out 16,000 new permits with amended expiry dates. This isn't hard. Yet, why are they going to screw so many thousands of people? What's the purpose? Just to make sure John Turmel never wins?